Hey, what's up, Internet? It's your soul here. And yeah, just got you looking here at Twitter at the Military Times feed. And this is uh, basically, as I understand it, publication for the US military. It's not one that I'm familiar with. So, you know, be, feel free to correct me on that. But that's not the point. Here's this story, which I've checked into. It checks out. You can see for yourself. How did the army exceed its recruiting goals this year? It was the student loan crisis, not the wars, service leaders say. And that links through to this page here on the Army Times website. Uh, I'll also point out that they, another story they've got on the Twitter feed there links through to this story with a nice picture of uh, the top-ranking Navy SEAL giving a sort of handy Luciferian hand signal there. But anyway... Um, so what this is effectively saying is that they're talking about the army recruitment drive in America, let's say, and the levels of success and failure from their perspective of achieving that. And uh, you can see here, it basically says, eventual outcomes of wars abroad are not really part of the discussion between potential soldiers and their recruiters. So in other words, when people go and talk to re army recruiters or the army recruiters go to colleges or wherever they are, shopping malls, they don't go along and talk about the actual effects of war and, and the actual objectives and the actual things that wars do and what the military is actually doing. They're talking about other things. And he goes on to say here, one of the national crises right now is student loans. So $31,000 is about the average. You can get out of the army after four years, 100% paid for state college anywhere in the United States. And this is Major General Frank Muth, head of Army Recruiting Command. So what he's basically saying there is he's literally coming out and saying people are joining the army because they get free college education and college education is very expensive and basically student loans means that people have a huge debt over them for the rest of their lives, which many people find difficult to pay off. Uh, so how ethical is this? Let's think about what he's really saying. He's saying that the US army is training up people to go and kill people for political reasons many of which aren't justifiable from proven history. For example, the Iraq war, which was entirely illegal and based on lies, proven. Um, he's saying that they're doing that. Many families are sending their children off to go and be killed, or to kill. And that's nothing to do with the actual war or the aim of the war. It's for other financial reasons. Let that sink in. You know, back in, uh, let's say, a few hundred years ago in Britain, they used to have press gangs, which were where basically naval, mainly, I think, um, so-called recruiting gangs would go around to bars, basically pubs, and go and find drunk guys, possibly smash them over the head even, basically abduct them and put them on a boat and send them off somewhere and force them to join the Navy. You know, that doesn't seem to work so well today when you've got a so-called democracy and you've got a press and you've got the internet and people filming what you're doing. You know, we have this thing called human rights. So, you know, whatever you think of that, that's meant to be there to protect you from things like, you know, the abduction by your government to go and serve in the military under threat of death, basically. It's meant to protect you from things like that. So they can't just go around doing that. But, you know, hey, if it's almost impossible for you to advance in the world without an education because of the involvement of technology and high competition from an expanding population globally, then you know, as long as it's almost impossible for you to get that education that you need to survive, unless you join the military, then hey, there's no problem. Loads of people are going to join the military. And that's pretty much what he's saying. This is the head of their recruiting literally saying that. So, you know, I mean, I've said for a long time that this is literally the time of the apocalypse. Apocalypse means revealing. And what that means is you're going to see more and more and more revealing of what's actually happening. And it's up to you to pay attention to it and then adapt your behaviour patterns so that you point yourself towards balance and therefore survival, which basically means integrity and balance in a way that ensures that you aren't being overpowered and you aren't overpowering other people, which means that you'll survive. It's the best chance you have of surviving. And if no one's overpowering you and therefore you also aren't overpowering yourself uh, as part of that process, then that's the best chance you have of surviving. And learning through this revealing process is going to help people do that who actually pay attention so you know this is an active process from my perspective that's happening globally in so many different areas and the internet's a big part of that and i think the fact that this guy is actually openly saying what he's saying here 
uh, is part of that process. You know, maybe he doesn't realise the literal evil in what he's saying or the stupidity of it. Maybe he's so brainwashed he actually thinks that's a good thing. Um, and, and, you know, <laughs> basically sort of almost posturing how powerful the army is and how awesome he is because he's in this position to literally suck people up from the nation and give them an education. It's almost like he's he's so bought into the, the propaganda of army recruitment that the idea that people can go and get a free education versus this um, forced loan system actually is a selling point for the army. You know, it's almost like he's saying that pretty much. He's not exactly saying that, but it's almost like he's saying that. Instead of pointing out, well, like any rational person would do, hey, maybe this isn't the best possible situation. You know, it's a good thing that the military gives people an education, but at the same time, they shouldn't be being forced to join the military in order to get an education. Uh, you know, we do need people who specialise in fields that haven't involved them having to be totally dominated by a control hierarchy and told and trained to express their emotions and kill anybody they're told to kill. You know, that maybe that isn't the healthiest thing for a human being to go through. Just a thought. When I went to university in Britain, the year after mine was the first year to have grants taken away, which meant that, uh, and to have tuition fees put in. So I didn't pay any tuition fees. Uh, and it's a long story, but... The short version is, uh, I came out of my time at university with a fair amount of student loans, but only a small fraction of what people came out with the year after me. And I think, believe it's got higher and higher since then because the fees have gone up and other issues. So I was, you know, probably the last, in, in the last year in Britain of people who graduated from university who were able to pay off their loans in a reasonable amount of time. You know, that's not the case today. And people have massively high loans and there are certain courses and fields such as medicine and so on where the actual amount required and the loans involved are massively more so i just want to share with you something that actually can be used to nullify student loans a lot of people just think that they're going to go and take the loan out and never pay it back um, but apparently in america now i heard recently that if you're actually declared bankrupt that doesn't write off your student loans so even though bankruptcy tends to end all your debts in traditional common law and, and inherited law that's been used for a very long time Apparently, over in America, well, USA, it's not America, is it? They, uh, yeah, it doesn't cancel your student loans, which I think is very telling. I think, I mean, I can understand that they would want to stop people from just going and taking the loans out and declaring bankruptcy. But on the other hand, it is very telling that their system is not one of um, education. It's one of, I would say, entrapment and enslavement. It's control. It's not something that's there to nurture the most beautiful flowers and the most beautiful people to turn them into the best they can be it's something that's there to compress control and force those people to behave and act in a way that they're told to behave and act it's not there to support free will it's there to dominate them and then therefore have them used to dominate others which is what america is being used for there's a very good book called descent into slavery uh, which covers this it's a few years old now i definitely recommend reading it and it, it describes how America, well, the USA ultimately was destined and designated by certain entities in the world, um, banking families and so on, to be used as what it calls the kingdom towing service. And what that means is that these large banking and financial entities would loan monies to nations, kingdoms and so on. But then when those nations and kingdoms or so on, whoever they were, defaulted on those payments, they had no real way of actually getting the money out of them because it's a nation. How, are you, how is a bank going to tell a nation, you know, you owe us money? They're going to send them bailiffs around. Obviously, that's not going to work. But if they've got a heavily militarised country to act as their bailiff, I don't know if bailiff is a word that people know globally, maybe it's a British word, but basically a, a debt collector. So these bankers essentially are using America or the USA as a as a debt collecting agency. So they lend out loans to whoever it is and then when the loans aren't paid back, they send in the military uh, under some false pretense like they did with, with Iraq and many other countries. And I think that's very insightful from the perspective that they're they're applying the same ploy to the American people as well. They're, they're loaning money to the American people and then forcing them uh, through economic slavery, effectively, to uh, participate in this global extortion racket and an empire-building process. So... What can you do about that? Well, for the moment, one of the things you can do is actually learn the legal system. And as corrupt and messed up as the legal system is, the fact is that 
there are ways to get out of alleged debts in a way that's lawful and that doesn't cost you hardly anything and you will win. And I've done it. I didn't do it with my student loans because I didn't know about this at the time. I'd already paid them off. But I've done it with other alleged debts. Uh, and, you know, this is a complicated subject. I've posted on this before. I'll put a link in the description to my post on this previously where I explain it. But the short version is that, at least in British law and common law, and probably in other, in, you know, they probably find similar things in other parts of the world as well. A debt is not enforceable. It's nullified. It doesn't really exist if certain um, measurements and uh, requirements aren't met. And those include the ability for the person claiming that the loan exists to provide a signed contract by both parties and key to demonstrate where the money came from that was allegedly loaned and is now owed. So in other words, if you can't prove where you got the money from that you've lent to someone, then how can they owe it to you? Because you can't even prove you gave it to them. So, uh, you know, there are other requirements as well, but generally speaking, that is enough in itself to nullify most loans from loan organisations because more often than not, they didn't have the money to loan you in the first place. It's actually fiction. They have used fractional reserve banking and some other related, basically fraudulent features to just make money out of thin air and then loan it to you and then charge you interest on it. Uh, and this is well known by people who study this and you can go and look at the work of uh, if I, it's been a long time since I listened to uh, Richard Werner, that's it, Professor Richard Werner, uh, who uh, did a, an actual academic study into this subject and got empirical evidence that what I'm saying is true by monitoring the um, financial flows with, when loans were made inside the software of banks and actually proved that they're loaning money they don't have. Uh, nothing happened as a result of that because to my knowledge, because basically the governmental system that's meant to be monitoring this and should step in to say, hey, that's not right, is bought and owned for by the people doing the crime. So, uh, you know, it's down to each individual person to learn this and apply it and break free of this enslavement system because it is literally an enslavement system. You know, like we, people who read the Bible and uh, study history will look at examples of slavery with whip, people being whipped and put up in stocks and beaten and they'll say, oh, how terrible, we must make sure that never happens again. You know, thank, thankfully we have the church and we have these higher moral guidelines to prevent that happening. In reality, the, exactly the same thing is happening on a massive industrialised scale constantly now. It's just that it's changed form in such a way that it's been camouflaged, literally, in a way that prevents people from recognising that it's happening. Um, and the only way out of it is for people to elevate their consciousness and understand the patterns involved and make choices that stop it working anymore and actually literally support free will and have true freedom uh, for themselves and to help others to create that. Freedom is not created through political manipulation, murder, abduction of children, all the things that these groups are doing. Freedom is an innate force within us which ultimately moves through our soul and our heart and empowers us from the inside and is based upon non-overpowering. Society is going to work a lot better if you actually learn to work with other people and, as a community, co-create things that feel good to everyone. Uh, the more in touch with your body and your soul and yourself you come, the more you realise and understand that. And unfortunately, the military training processes are the opposite of that. They literally, they know this. It's not done by accident. They will train people to pull out of their emotions, to overpower their, their own innate um, feelings about certain things in order to follow uh, orders, ultimately. You know, their, their own will is being denied in favour of a mission statement, and often they'll be punished if they don't go along with that. So, I mean, if you look at the MK Ultra mind trauma-based trauma, trauma -based mind control processes that I exposed uh, a few days ago in a video that I uploaded from the president of the American Clinical Hypnosis Society, uh, who deprogrammed a lot of people who had been uh, literally tortured for extended periods to have their personalities wiped and turned into a, basically a slave, you'll find that the methods that they used in that programming are ver variants of the programming used in the militaries uh, around the world, basically using pain and intimidation to force people's behaviour patterns and thought processes to change. And, you know, yes, there are benefits that people can gain from receiving physical training and, you know, a degree of mental training and so on, uh, which many people will point to the military and say, oh, you know, I wouldn't be the person I was today without the military, blah, blah, blah. But it's a very poor replacement for what could be achieved through right training, uh, right agenda, right intention. And that requires heart-centered balance. So 
that's what I point people towards and, and help people understand. And you know, maybe you've you've gained a little bit on that subject here today. And if you if you're interested in sort of going more deeply into that subject, you can check out my website eureka.org, ureka.org, or my my blog on Steam. I've written many posts on this subject from many different angles over the years. And I can point you to many good books as well and groups who are focused into this kind of work as well. And you'll be amazed at the power and strength and mental acuity and jump in your IQ and all these things that you will achieve as a result of true balance, which are basically impossible if you're talking about somebody barking orders at you and telling you what to do. Uh, that's not how you become the best version of yourself. The best version of yourself is within you already. You just need to align yourself to bring it out. And the process of you doing the aligning instead of someone else basically punishing you into that sort of similar alignment uh, is itself empowering and will produce results that cannot be achieved through the military or schools or anything else like that. And there's no, there's no power structure that can give you what you can give yourself. So I hope I've given you something to think about here. Please do check out the links in the comments below. As I said, that I will be putting uh, the link in there that explains something about how to bypass alleged fake debts, which is basically most loans, including mortgages and credit cards and so on and uh and other related info in there as well and if you've liked this then please do give me a thumbs up or an upvote on steam and a re-steam if you're on there uh reblog share it along with your friends and if you're on youtube please do hit the notification bell to receive all the notifications from me as well if you are subscribed and until next time peace